Hello, in this video we are going to talk about law of cosines. Law of cosines is one of the trigonometry tools that we use to solve for missing sides and angles on triangles. You do not need to have a right triangle in order to use law of cosines. So unlike Sokotoa, it is possible to use law of cosines even if you don't have a right triangle. So let's take a look at what the equation is for law of cosines. Now it looks a little bit complicated at first, but if you break it down into parts, it's actually not that complicated. So here it is, c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus two times a times b times the cosine of c. Now, one of the things that you might notice is that the very beginning of the equation looks a lot like the Pythagorean theorem. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared, that is the same thing as the Pythagorean theorem. And the law of cosines is, and Pythagorean theorem are really connected together. If you were going to try to do the law of cosines for a right triangle and you were trying to find the side that's opposite from the 90 degree angle, the cosine of 90 degrees equals zero, so it basically eliminates the last part of the equation there. So Pythagorean theorem really is just a simplified version of law of cosines. Okay, let's talk about a couple other things that are important to keep in mind when we're doing law of cosines. You'll notice that in our equation, we have a lowercase c and a capital C. So keep in mind that capital C's represent angles and lowercase c's represent side lengths. And it's really important that you identify the angle and the side length that are opposite from each other when you're trying to identify which side should be C. A and B are really interchangeable. Um, it doesn't matter which side length you label as A and which side length you label as B. The key is knowing that the angle that you have is opposite from one of the side lengths and making sure that you get those set up together. So let me show you what I mean. So here's an example where we've got a 39 degree angle and then we have information about all three sides here. So we know that there's a side of 15 and a side of 30. We're gonna try to solve for that side that's X. In order to use law of cosines, you have to have information about all three side lengths and you have to know at least one of the angles. The next thing that's important to note about this problem is, or that's good to think about about this problem, is what kind of answer we should anticipate for x. So if you think back to the triangle inequality theorem, we can try to figure out a range for what the possible answers would be for x. So for this problem, it's going to be somewhere in between 15 and 45. And I know that because if I look at my two side lengths that I already have, 15 and 30, if I subtract those, I get 15. And if I add them, I get 45. So that means x has to be somewhere in the middle. The next thing that I'm going to do is to try to identify which angle and which side length are opposite from each other. So in this example, the 39 degrees is opposite from x, and that's going to be important when we set up our equation here. I'm going to start my equation with x squared, and the reason that I'm going to start my equation with x squared is because I know that that's opposite from the 39 degree angle. The 39 is going to be what we take the cosine of. Now, the A and the B, like I said before, are interchangeable, so I decided to use 15 for A and 30 for B, but I easily could have switched those around. I could have done 30 squared plus 15 squared, reverse the order. The order doesn't matter for those other two sides. All right, the next thing that we need to do is some calculations. So here is where your calculator is going to be super, super helpful. You should be able to type basically the entire equation into your calculator. So you're going to start with this 15 squared. You're going to do plus 30 squared minus 2 times 15 times 30 times the cosine of 39. If you type that in later, you are going to get 425.5686347. Now we're not quite done yet, and one of the things that I want to point out to you is that we know our answer right now is way, way, way too big. Remember we said before that our answer has to be somewhere in between 15 and 45. Right now we're at 425. That's way too big. 
it's good for us to think about whether that answer is set because a lot of people forget to do the last step. The very last thing is to just take the square root. So if you do the square root of 425.568637, you are going to get 20.63. And 20.63 is in between 15 and 45. So it's a great check for us to make sure our answer is reasonable.